So the first thing I want to talk about is predator-prey relationships. Now, in life, one of the most important things to, to look at in ecosystems is the way that predators and play act with each other. And especially from an evolutionary point of view, it explains a lot. It explains a lot of the features that you see in life. First, let's look at the numbers issue here. You have the hair and the links graph over here in the top. By the way, you have lots of pictures here of predation. And by the way, when I say predation, I include herbivory, which is like um, when an uh, organism eats a plant. It's still, the plant's still being predated on. It's still a predator, kind of. It's just a herbivore, but it's still attacking it, right? So, but back to the hair and the links. The links is obviously going to be hunting the hair. And it's represented by the red line in the graph that you see. And then the, the hairs are going to be the green. Now remember from what we learned from, from ecology in the previous chapter that it's very important for you to have a pyramid that looks like this. There's got to be more people at the bottom than the top. That means there should always be more hairs than links. But what happens if something like this happens? Notice in the beginning there's more links than there is hairs. Well, that's an upside down pyramid. That's not going to work because the, the hairs will start to uh, be eaten too much and the links will start to starve because they're going to run out of food. Exactly what happens, the links will starve and it will start to die off. You see how it, the graph dips because of that. But then that means that there's going to be more, uh, less predators around, then that means that the hairs can now grow again. And that means that their numbers will should spike up as the numbers of links go down, and that's exactly what you see. But then as there's more hairs available, now the links can again hunt more and grow up more. So the population will also increase, but if the population increased, then what does that mean about the hair population? It should decrease, and that's why you see the dip over there. So every, see, every time you see one going up, you probably see the other one going down. The end result is that many times they will crisscross with each other. That is an excellent example of a predator-prey relationship, and we'll talk about it in class. We'll actually do an experiment so you can see how this works in real life. But the cool thing about it is that it shows that there's intricate relationships between animals in the ecosystem and then you have to look at the numbers of both of them together that the prey depends on the predator you know because the more predators there are the less predator can be but the less predator is the less predator there can be so that means that they're constantly going to be balancing each other out in the ecosystem and that shows you again the complexity of the way that biological systems actually are this also uh, influences the evolutionary process of both things predators are under constant pressure from the prey to become better prey catchers. So they have to evolve, develop things like speed, like, like the cheetah, or strength, like the lion, or, or be venomous, like a cobra, or have the camouflage so they can hide in the environment, or better eyesight, flight, uh, hunting in packs. All of these things are different ways which predators have evolved to become better at catching prey because they're under constant pressure to become better. So that any mutation that gives them an advantage at becoming a better predator would obviously be selected for and that's why evolution made sure that the predators develop all these cool traits. Likewise, the prey has to defend itself from the predator. So being vigilant, having better hearing, long ears, having behaviors like the bunnies which they actually act dead when they're not really dead so the predator stops chasing them and all of a sudden they take off. Being better at running, running in zigzag, unpredictable patterns, trying to run as fast as you can, being part of a herd so that you can have strength in numbers. All of these things are different ways in which prey have tried to cope with the predators. Like the predators also were trying to hide, you see how the colors of, the, of them sometimes are designed so they can hide in the environment. Here you see more examples of that kind of cryptic correlation or camouflage, that's what it's called. And you, can you spot all the animals here? And by the way, notice it's not just the animals themselves which can be cryptic. Sometimes it's the eggs, sometimes it's the nest. The animals try to hide from the predators so that they can avoid detection. So that's a very good way, uh, very common trait in life, again, born out of the pressure for the prey not be caught. Likewise, sometimes the prey develops something that's called aposematic correlation or warning correlation. Very bright colors or strange colors which send a message to the predator, if you eat me, you will probably die because I'm toxic. The toxicity itself is also a trait that evolved because of the pressure from the predator, right? But then they also involve, on top of that, a coloration pattern that tells the predator, wait, remember the last time you ate me? You didn't like my taste. Don't eat me again. And some predators even evolve to recognize this by nature so they don't even eat them in the first place. So you see, there's a co-evolution here. The predator and the prey evolve together to respond to each other, kind of, you know? 
In fact, other kinds of cool correlation patterns evolved because of that. Another thing that evolved along the same lines of correlation is the idea of mimicry. You may not necessarily be toxic, but if you copy someone who is toxic, you're going to be able to uh, send a message that the other person was sending. So not necessarily all of these insects are toxic, but if they copy the ones which are toxic, they can send a message that the other ones were sending along with it. That is called Batesian mimicry, and it's when an organism copies someone who's toxic to try to send a message. And sometimes they're both toxic, but they copy each other and become very similar to each other so that together they send a more clear message. The more toxins they have, the better. So here you reveal both of the types. Bates and mimicry is one, one copy is one that's not toxic to try to write along the same message. And Mullerian mimicry, when they both kind of copy each other, to, so together they send a message that you better avoid these kinds of colors. So mimicry is yet another example of a, a trait that evolved because of, of pressure from the prey to send a message to the predator that it should not be hunted. Likewise, flowers also evolved uh, defense mechanisms. Because remember, her herbivores will have to eat so the herbivores, as predators, develop better senses so they can identify the right flower to eat, you know, or the right leaves to eat. The, the sense of taste, the sense of smell, it's all about finding the right food, right? M meanwhile, the, the plants also develop defense mechanisms against the herbivores, like things like spines and, and th thorns or poison themselves so that the leaves are be toxic for, 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 for the prey. But then the prey develops a way to identify that so that they can avoid that, or a mechanism to get rid of the toxins so they, don't, they can eat them anyways, like some kinds of caterpillar that actually can eat toxic plants. So as you can see, predator and prey relationships are one example of community ecology and how a relationship between two organisms, one which benefits from it, which is going to be the predator, so the relationship is positive for him, and one which has, is hurt by it, which is negative for him, the prey, this kind of relationship it's going to influence a lot of things in the ecosystem. They rely on each other and they evolve together, something that's called co-evolution. Hope that makes sense.